All right, gang, Dave Baker here, and I finally get to answer some of the fan questions. So here we go. I love weapons very much, but I also cook a lot, and I just wanted to know where all these sliced up meat hunks go, and how much of them go to waste. Well, all those pig carcasses, uh, boar carcasses, those all go to a wolf sanctuary in upstate New York. When we cut up the salmon, that usually gets filleted by myself and goes in my refrigerator. <laughs> Where did you get those bleeding mannequins? <laughs> so our bleeding gel torsos, those actually come from our art department. What they do is they take a plastic skeleton and they pack that full of rubberized organs and blood packs. Then they pour ballistics gel around it in a mold and let that set up. Once that's set up, those are our gel torsos. Now, that took a lot of time and research to make those molds. We go through them like there's no tomorrow. But uh, our department does a great job setting those things up. I have a question about the Nagamaki. Was it effective at blocking? I mean, it's really quick and really sharp, but it seems kind of flimsy and might break easily. Hmm. I'm not really a person with a big knowledge on weaponry, so please take it easy on me. <laughs> the Nagamaki is sort of a oversized katana blade with a handle almost the same length as the blade. Was it commonly used for defense as well as attack? And yes, it's a, both an offensive, defensive weapon. If you're going to get into a fight in feudal Japan, you, you probably ought to have something that's both offensive and defensive. And when used by somebody who has studied that weapon and understands how it works in all its forms, it's a very quick weapon. I don't know if William Wallace used a claymore at the Battle of Falkirk. No? I don't know either. There are a lot of legends about William Wallace and what he carried. The sword that is on display in Scotland probably wasn't his. I I know some people are going to call and yell, but um, there were great swords in the period, but the design of those swords doesn't quite follow what was necessarily used maybe in the movie and or what is on display in Scotland. Don't get too mad at me. <laughs> is the Zweihander not simply a flambearish, or is that just the type of blade? So is the Zweihander we had on the show a flamberge? Yes, the flamberge re refers to the actual blade on the thing. You can have a flamberge rapier, you can have a flamberge broadsword, you can have a flamberge whatever you want. Flamberge just means flame-like. And so, yes, our Zweihanders were flamberge. What's the difference between a hussar and a messer? A hussar is a position in the military. They were horse cavalry. The Hussar saber is a curved saber. A messer is actually a blade. There's the Kriegsmesser, Grossmesser, standard messer, and it's basically a chopping blade. It usually had a knuckle bow, a small guard, sometimes a pummel, sometimes not. So what's the difference between a Hussar and a messer? A Hussar is a person, a messer is a sword. Watch more of Forge and Fire videos on History's YouTube page. And if you have any questions, or thoughts, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to address them in future videos.